All right, welcome to question number three from the 2023 AP Statistics FRQ exam. In this video, we're going to go over the full answers to the question. All right, here it was. Bath fizzies are mineral tablets that dissolve and create bubbles when added to bath water. In order to increase sales, the fizzy bath company has produced a new line of bath fizzies that have cash prizes in every bath fizzy. Sounds like a wet dollar bill if you have to put it in the bath to get the dollar bill out. Anyway, let the random variable X represent the dollar value of the cash prize in a bath fizzy. The probability distribution of X is shown in the table below. So across the top row here, we see the options for how much cash you could win in a bath fizzy, 1, 5, 10, 20, 50, 100 dollars. And then we see the probabilities. Now we do see the probability of 1% for 100, 1% for 50, 5% for 20, 5% for 10, 2% for 5, and the $1 is not necessarily, I mean, it is left blank, but they're just telling us that underneath the $1 would be the probability of $1, but we don't know what it is. So, of course, that's exactly what question one is. Calculate the proportion of bath fizzies that contain $1. So, it's really just as simple as adding up all of the other proportions and subtracting them from one. So, technically, if I'm trying to show all my work here, the probability that the um, the random variable X is equal to one would be one minus everything greater than one. So I'm literally going to combine the 20%, 5%, 5%, 1%, 1% for everything that is greater than one. And then of course I have to do one minus that. So adding up everything that's there, you get 0.32. One minus 0.3 is one minus 0.32 is 0.68. So you got about a 68% chance of getting a $1 prize in your bath fizzy. All right, question part two of part A says, calculate the proportion of bath fizzies that contain at least $10. So at least 10 means 10 or greater. So I first wrote that out using proper notation, the probability that the random variable X is greater than or equal to $10. And then I literally went and added up the proportions for 10, 20, 50, and 100. That is 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, which is 0.12, 12%. So you got about 12% chance of winning at least $10 in your bath fizzy. So a couple pretty easy probability questions there. Just doing some quick math. Probably don't even need a calculator for these problems if you're, if you're pretty good in your head. All right, the next question said, based on the probability distribution of X, calculate the probability that a randomly selected bath fizzy contains $100 given that it contains at least 10. So it's important that you see the word given there. That is, of course, going to create a conditional probability. If the question just stopped at the probability that a randomly selected bath fizzy contains $100, that would be easy, 0.01, 1%. Just go back and look at the table. But we have a conditional probability here. So we first start off by writing that out. So we're looking at the probability that we have $100 in our bath fizzy on the condition. That's what that we see that line there. And the condition is that the amount in the bath fizzy is at least 10, greater than or equal to 10, which is great news because we've already calculated that probability in the previous question. All right, so using your conditional probability formula in the numerator is both, both values, right? Both things, the probability of what we're looking for and the condition. So this is the probability that a bath fizzy contains $100 and is greater than or equal to 10. Now, if you think about it, that those are not the same thing, but the, 10, the $100 is greater than or equal to 10. So $100 and greater than or equal to 10 are like one in the same because 100 is greater than or equal to 10. Does that make sense? So the numerator both is the probability that you're greater than or equal to 10 and 100, but that's just the same as the probability that you are $100. That's 0.01. That I guess you could say is the overlap, right? So if I go back to my chart here and I say, okay, I'm going to highlight everything that is greater than or equal to 10, and then the overlap, that's also 100, would be right here, and I just made it black. But um, you get the point, and it would be the 0.01, that is the overlap. So $100 and greater than or equal to 10 is 0.01. And then the denominator is the condition, just the condition, greater than or equal to 10, which again, we just got done calculating, that was the 0.12. So divide and conquer, take 0.01, divided by 0.12, and you get 0.08333. So you got about an 8.3% chance of getting a $100 inside of your bath fizzy, knowing or given that that bath fizzy contains $10 or more. 
All right, the final qu well, not two more questions here. Sorry. So, uh, question C: Based on the probability distribution of X, calculate and interpret the expected value of the distribution of the cash prize in the bath fizzies. Now, there's two ways you can get this answer. You could do it by hand or use your calculator. Doing it by hand is pretty easy. You just take each outcome times its probability or times its proportion and add them all together. Pretty simple formula here. But again, you can also go and grab your calculator. And in list one, you would put all of the cash prizes, 1, 5, 10, 20, 50, 100. In list two, you'd put the corresponding probabilities, 0 0.68, 0 0.2, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.01, 0 0.01. And then you would do a one variable stats, but make sure that the list is your cash prizes. And the frequency list underneath it would need to be the proportions that you had in list two. And then when you run that, you'll get the mean or the expected value. And expected value and the mean are the exact same thing. So the expected value for X is the same thing as saying the mean of X would be $4.68. Pretty easy. Now, it's important that you read the question. It says calculate and interpret. So if you just put 0.468 as your final, or 4.68 as your final answer, unfortunately, you're not going to get full credit because they did ask you to interpret. So remember, an expected value or a mean is what we expect in the long run. So in the long run, after many, many, many bath fizzies are opened, the average amount won inside is $4.68. So imagine if we kept a journal and every time we'd open up a bath fizzy, we wrote down how much we got. We'd probably see a lot of ones in that bath journal, occasional five here and there, maybe a 10 or 20 will pop up, and very, very, very rarely, well, I say very rarely, but you would not have nearly as many 50s and 100s. But if you did that for many, 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 many bath fizzies, in the long run, the average amount of money that you would win from your bath fizzies would be $4.68. Again, another way of looking at this is if someone was about to open up a bath fizzy, there was a bath fizzy right in front of them, and you say, okay, I expect you to win $4.68. Now, of course, that's not even an option for how much you could win, but it's an average in the long run. So make sure that you interpret that value as well. All right. Now, I was all prepared for question D to be super hard, but it was unbelievably easy. The fizzy bath company would like to sell the bath fizzies in France where the currency is in euros. Suppose that the conversion rate for dollars to euros is $1 equals 0.89 euros. Using your expected value from part C, calculate the expected value in euros of the distribution of cash prizes in the bath fizzies. Show your work. So here we simply have to convert our expected value from dollars in the United States to euros in France. All we have to do is multiply by the conversion factor. So if you've taken chemistry, you're hopefully pretty good at conversion factors, but they even give you the conversion factor. They don't expect you to know it. $1 equals 0.89 euros. So we are simply taking the $4.68. We're multiplying it by 0.89 euros over $1. Don't divide it. Again, remember, we want to multiply it by 0.89 over 1 because we want the, the dollars to cancel out. So that's why we want that, you know, $4.68 is in dollars. We want that $1 in the bottom. That way it cancels out and we're left with the euros. So all you have to do is multiply by 0.89. And if you multiply, you do get, you know, four decimals there, 4.1652. But, you know, rounding that to a dollars and cents be 4.17 euros. Actually, I should take that dollar sign off there and write euros. I don't know what the official sign for a euro is. Um, but maybe there isn't one. I don't know. Maybe they just say euros. But anyway, that's it. That's how easy it was. Just literally multiplying it to convert it over to euros. So in euros, you would expect to win in the long run 4.17 euros as opposed to 4.68 US dollars. All right, that's it. I think that was actually one of the easier probability questions I've seen on an AP FRQ before. Overall, not too bad. Hopefully you guys did well on it. All right, see you in the next video.